Hi, my name is Eduardo. I've been a professional animator for the past 10 or so years. I've been working in things like video games and films and TV shows. This has given me a lot of practice into things that are visual, that you can see. Movement and rhythm and colors and shapes. But I've recently become a little bit more interested in music. I used to love music. I used to play the guitar when I was a kid. So about two years ago, I began a little journey of myself into trying to learn to play the piano. But I just didn't want to know how to play an instrument. I wanted to learn how to write music. I wanted to create my own scores. So I took in everything about theory, about harmony, about melody, about rhythm, counterpoint, you name it. It was all fine and good until I tried learning how to write songs, getting into all these rules of composition, which involved looking at these chords, these symbols, almost like mathematical equations, that you were supposed to know what would they contain in order to stay in the same scale. That started becoming a nightmare right away. And I didn't really know if it was just my mind that was too used to being visual, but this almost looked like math to me. I wanted to find a technique that I could use for myself. So I started developing this chart behind me, which I know looks like a lot. It's a very complicated thing, and I'm going to try to split it into easy pieces for you to understand and hopefully encourage you to use it. It all began with uh, one of the music theory basics, which is the Wheel of Fifths. It was invented by Nikolai Dileski in the 1670s as a way of understanding the relationships between different chords, minor and major chords, which are the basic blocks of music. So looking at this chart, I thought, well, this is a little bit confusing because it's based in letters. It's based on the letters A to G. So A being the first minor key, but C is usually the first key because it's from the major scale. So I wanted something simpler than that, something I could easily go to because, well, you see, in Western music, there are 12 notes. Eastern music has way more than 12 notes, but Western music, which is pretty much what everybody's used to, has 12 notes. And those 12 notes have seven natural notes, as we usually call them, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And they have the so-called accidentals, which could be sharp or flat, but they would change depending on which scale you were in and all these sets of rules. This was confusing and I wanted something simpler. I wanted to see those 12 notes as a single thing. So I could never forget which note I'm dealing with and I could find some sort of a relationship between them. That's how I started this project. The first thing I tried was using numbers. So instead of thinking of A, B, C, I would be thinking of one, three, four. I put all these notes together and I go from 1 to 12, beginning with A, because I wanted to stay kind of in the same line. Um, from A, which would be 1, I would be going up until I reach the 12 and then so on into A. So putting all these numbers together instead of the usual chord names, I found that it wasn't clear enough yet because it's numbers and numbers are kind of difficult to remember. I mean, you could remember that four is above one for the C chord and the A minor chord, but what about something that's simpler and easier? I also wanted to remember because this was the whole point, which note part of which chord, which notes become a minor, which notes become C minor, which notes become G flat minor. So what I ended up doing was using something called the phonetic numbers, which is you relate a sound to each number. And I would just make this list of these numbers from 1 to 12 and assign a sound, a consonant. So 1 would be T or D, 2 would be the N sound and 3 would be the M sound and so forth. That way I could start putting these numbers together. Say for example, C major, which is like the most common chord ever. C major, which is a C, an E, and a G, in my world would be a four, an eight, and an 11. 
then using this notation system, 4 would become R, 8 would become F, and 11 would become like the H sound, the H sound. Because I am a Spanish speaker, I created refugio, a shelter. Dinosaur. Okay, Boomer. Chords, which are groups of notes, don't necessarily need to start on one note in particular. They could just be random. As long as you play those notes, you are playing that chord. Actually, if you rotate this wheel, you could find which note you are using to play the bass. And that's called an inversion. So first inversion. And second inversion are all of them the same chord, but they have a different flavor. Now I had this bunch of wheels. I made a symbol to represent each word or concept that I was referring to using the phonetic system. This was getting a little bit easier to me because now I could just think of the sound and that would give me the number or the note in this case, but I still wanted something even simpler. This is when I hit me. Colors is the universal language because green is green everywhere. In a way, I guess I was trying to give myself synesthesia. I mean, only 4% of the population have synesthesia. I don't. But I wanted some sort of a skill that would give me a way of thinking of a number. In this case, thinking of a sound, of a note, and just think of a color. So I would just relate all those things together into one single thing. That way, a number from 1 to 12 would be a number, it would be a color, it would be a sound, and it would give me a way of remembering things. I used the rainbow and then I just added a few more colors to get those 12 and I just kind of made sure that they were contrasting enough so you could find your way through them. Then it would only be a matter of thinking of colors instead of numbers. It would be even easier now. So let's say F major. F major would be purple, it would be red and it would be yellow. And wait a minute, isn't that like something you could relate to something else as well? So I made this new list, which is the final list of my chart which is yet another way of learning how to put these notes together. I finally decided to put something in the middle that would also help me find another note. So instead of having three notes, I would have four of them, and the fourth note would be the seventh dominant, which is very useful for jazz. It's useful for a lot of things. So the final part of my experiment was to relate this new list of color sequences to my previous wheel, and I would be thinking of easy things. Say, for example, A minor. A minor is a red, a yellow and a blue. So something that has red, yellow and blue would be Bart Simpson, for example. My previous wheel had a trufa, which still helps me because it's TRF. All I need to do now is to imagine Bart Simpson eating a bowl of truffles. And if I want to compose a piece by using that chord, I know which notes would be part of that. I know which notes would be useful if you're playing something in the A minor chord. I can go back to replace all the chords in the uh, circle of fifths, but now I'm using my own chords. So I'll put all the major chords and all the minor chords, all the diminished chords, and even add a few augmented chords as well. You can actually start making progressions with this, which is how you compose a song. There are a lot of rules to compose something, but the main thing goes like this. You start with a home key, you start with the key that you're gonna go back to, and music is all about tension and resolution, so anywhere you go from that point, 
you're going to be drawn to go back to it. It's almost like a magnet. It's going to drive you back to the home. And home is going to always give you the tone of your music. So if it's a major chord, it's going to be a happy and joyful song. And if you go to the minor key, it's always going to be a little bit more gloomy or uh, dark or epic. Then from that point on, you start adding all the chords that are next to them. So instead of thinking of going to the right or to the left, because this is a circle, you can do this anywhere. Just uh, think of going clockwise or going counterclockwise and just go outside of the circle or into the circle. And here's a little trick. You can uh, remember which position you are going to. If you are counterclockwise, it's going to be even numbers. And if you are clockwise, it's going to be odd numbers. So the fifth chord is going to be to its clockwise position and the fourth chord is going to be to its counterclockwise orientation. And below those ones are going to be the minor positions, which is the second and the third. And all the way down into the circle, you're going to find the seventh chord, which is going to be a diminished chord if you are in the major key. But you can always play around with this. Seeing this seven chords doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stay. You can always add another one and just use colors that are similar, use notes that are similar. And it's super useful now because every time I want to play something, if I know where I am in the wheel of fifths, I can remember which chord was there by using that symbol as a reference. And then I would be able to know exactly which notes comprise that chord. If I even wanted to add a seventh, I could because I remember which color was the symbol. Yeah, little by little I would end up remembering, just like musicians do, which notes are part of which chord. It's been helping me a lot into my new journey into music, and I hope it's useful for you too. I hope you don't find it too complicated. Just let me know if you have anything that you would add to it. I even added a chart that would show you how they would look like in the instrument that you want to play. Like for example a keyboard or a violin, then those colors would start getting so familiar to you that that would be it. It would be easy now. Yeah, because I am a Spanish speaker, all these ones were written in Spanish, and I'm not sure they're going to be helpful to you anyway. So I added a blank one that you can just download. and. There's even a numbers option, some people would find it useful. It's going to be available in my website, in the link below. Give it a try and let me know if you find it easier or harder, if you get so confused that you can't deal with music anymore, or on the contrary, like me, if you start playing with music as you're seeing it, like if it's a rainbow of colors now. And I sure hope that this helps more people in the future because it has actually helped me a lot and it's been a very useful tool for myself. So thank you for watching and see you next time.